so everyone as you have been waiting for this amazing session for today so let me actually give uh, a very great introduction about this uh, session first of all okay uh, so let me actually tell you what are the major things we are going to learn in this session so as you can see in the slide so the very first one that is introduction to space flight it is also called as astronautics okay so we are going to rock today that's obvious and i hope everyone is interested in this uh, space flight and spacecraft space technology and everything okay so because it's a so wonderful field you can uh, pursue your career obviously and uh, you will you will get a huge amount of opportunities and huge amount of knowledge obviously you will get it okay first of all let me introduce myself everyone and so my name is mithun mangat and i had taken btech in electrical and electronics engineering in uh, year 2009 and after that i have Uh, completed. I had done my M Tech in Astronomy and Space Engineering in year. I completed in 2011, and uh, it was from Manipal Institute of Technology. And post that, I was working in a company, and it is called as F. So it's an aerospace industry field. It is not uh, completely into space technology, but I I got the opportunity to work with aircraft engine, aircraft uh, landing gears. Okay, and, uh, and during my M Tech day, uh, the final year project was the dissertation was done uh, in ISRO, one of the centers ISRO in Bangalore, ISRO, that is Indian Space Research Organization. So there, I got to I got a new opportunity to work uh, in a project which is related to Mars mission, interplanetary mission. So I was a part of that, and post that I was uh, uh, post that I was working uh, for a couple of years in the aerospace industry, and then I I was working as a teacher in special physics. So yes, this is my background, and as you can see, we are going to learn about space flight, especially about the introduction part of the space flight. I can see here, right? So let let's begin an amazing thing. So let's do that. So here, uh, in this in this particular uh, slide, in this particular course, we are going to learn a many number of many number of huge huge amount of uh, you know the technological details about the spacecraft engineering. As you can see here. the very basic definition is mentioned right what exactly are space engineering and and even uh, many student told me okay sir i'm i'm, I'm just confused with uh, the major differences between the inside aerospace engineering so to be very precise may tell you aerospace engineering consists of two major brands one is called as aeronautical engineering and the other one is called as astronautical engineering which we will be concentrating today all right so aeronautical engineering everyone knows about it right most of the people in india they are more into aeronautical engineering because uh, here most of the courses if even if you say aerospace engineering mostly 80 to 90 85 percentage it is more more just pointing the aeronautical engineering right and in the case of astronautical engineering which is actually a developing field developing engineering field right now especially in india but abroad it's huge all right So let me tell you about the difference, major difference between these two. So first of all, let me actually read the statement about aerospace engineering, which is you already know. It's the primary field of engineering concerned with the development of aircraft and spacecraft. You can clearly see that, right? So in this case, if you see this aircraft, something anything related to aircraft, which can, we can call as aeronautical engineering, which is below the space, right? You have the earth and in the atmosphere, we can consider it as. Inside the atmosphere, anything inside the atmosphere, in the, any engineering inside the atmosphere related to rockets, anything related to you know the aircraft, fighter fighter airplanes, anything you know, you can say you can think about that, right? So that is related to aeronautical engineering. But what exactly is astronautical engineering? You can see this beautiful picture, right? It's a it's a space shuttle, you know that, right? It's it looks like a space shuttle. Obviously, it is a space shuttle. It's a launch of a space shuttle. So it is going outside the Earth's atmosphere. Suppose we'll take a Uh, a mars mission you launch a spacecraft towards the space right it will be put in an orbit around the earth and then it will be eject it will be it will be you know send it to the mars so till the atmosphere we call that aeronautical after that whatever you do it is relating to astronautical engineering okay to design the spacecraft to design the structure of the spacecraft anything related to the the spacecraft in electronics and in, anything related to radar anything related to sending signals everything related to astronautical engineering okay so let me actually tell you about this picture which which i have which i'm showing over here in more detail okay so it's written it is the launch of sts78 as i told you it is space shuttle right space shuttle shuttle columbia what is sts it is space transportation system we have to transport something to the space right so space shuttle columbia you can see that right 
on June 20, 1996 from Kennedy Space Center with the Life and Microgravity Space Lab, LMS, it is called as LMS, as its primary payload. So remember guys, these are the different terms you need to keep in your mind. Payload, right? Then you have the space shuttle, space transportation system. Then rockets, you can see that in, in this structure, there are three major things. Right. One is a space shuttle. You can see the white color thing over here. I hope you are able to see the, over this over here right now. Right. I'm just putting my uh, mouse pointer. And then you can see the orange color thing, which is called as the external tank, which is supplying the fuel to this space shuttle because there is no fuel tank inside the major fuel tank inside the space shuttle. So it is directly fed. It is directly sent from this external tank. And there are two different kind of two pillars. You can see that, right? The white color thing. So these are called as solid rocket boosters, SRBs, solid rocket boosters. So solid fuels are there inside, okay? And this is used only during the launch. After some few minutes, couple of minutes, it will be jettisoned, the term jettisoned from this main body and this orange colored structure and this space shuttle will be moving towards the space. And then afterwards, it will be jettisoned away from the space shuttle and, you know, then it will do some of the uh, works there in space, especially it is used, the space shuttle, space shuttle was used. It is not currently in active right now. It is already uh, abundant. The mission is abundant. The program is abundant, space shuttle program, because of certain, certain, certain technical reasons, obviously, and about the cost. So we'll see that. We'll see that in this course. More in detail, we are going to learn about each and every important structure there about the space shuttle as well. Okay, so it will be sent to it was sent to International Space Station. So so astronauts, we sent astronauts towards the space. Initially, NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, so they were using this launch thing to send astronauts to space, International Space Station. Okay, so we'll see that in detail. And as I said, the payload, you remember this one, the life and microgravity space lab, I told you. This was a structure which was kept inside the payload bay or cargo bay we say okay so this picture is an actual original picture which was clicked in 1996 the life and microgravity space lab which is you know which was sent to international space station which was managed by nasa's marshall space flight center one of the centers of nasa and you can see this one it is actually installed it is loaded into cargo's sorry columbia's cargo bay right it's columbia shuttle space shuttle right you know that columbia space shuttle is not existing right now because of the disaster which happened in which you know kalpana chawla was there so it's a very unfortunate thing because this is these are one of the reasons they abandoned this program so you know safety issues are there right okay so this one if you see <clears throat> this one you can see this is putting one it's a very first satellite you can see that it's a very amazing picture it's a historic image it shows a technician putting the finishing touches on putting one that is humanity's first sat artificial satellite. So from this point of time, that is on October 4th, 1957, the space age started, right? Before that, you know, Wright brothers, they actually uh, tried doing the aircraft and everything. So we are not concerned about that. We are going in outside atmosphere. So this is a very first moment, very first breathtaking moment. That's the starting of the space age, right? And now this is our concentration. You need to, you need to keep this concept, our concentration towards this part right now. In this slide, on the right hand side, you can see, right, orbital parameters. We are going to learn a lot about this orbital parameters. There are different orbital parameters. So here it is, you can see eccentricity is mentioned. You had already learned conic section in your law classes and in mathematics, you have learned in engineering mathematics, right? It's written as 0 0.05201, right? So more approximately, you can keep this value of 0 0.05. Then perigee altitude, apogee altitude, inclination, period, time period. So these are the various parameters you will learn in detail why we require these details and where are we going to use it everything so that's the reason i have kept these parameters over here for the detail for the details of in, in the details of this putting one the very first satellite right you can see that eccentricity as i told is 0 0.005 if you remember the conic section in your engineering mathematics or maybe in the lower classes you have learned if eccentricity is between zero and one what is the shape of it it's ellipse. So yes, it's an elliptical orbit, right? If it is going towards the zero, it is coming as exactly circle, circle, right? More or less like a circle, but it's, it's an ellipse. It's between zero and one, correct? And now it's perigee altitude. Perigee altitude, then you have apogee altitude. Perigee is the nearest point. We'll see that in detail in our upcoming slides. What are these? And inclination, 55.1 degrees. That is the inclination of this orbit with respect to the equatorial plane. We'll learn that in detail. 
okay this these are really very important parameters which we require when we design orbits for any sort of spacecraft reason is that we'll see that and the period time period 96.2 minutes approximately 96 minutes it is revolving it is completing one revolution around the earth let's take our, our next case that is the our own satellite our own very first light Aribata. it was launched in 1975 on April 19th by ISRO, right? You already know that. And you can see the second picture, it's a disassembled motors of Arriva. There are lots of them just being done. You can see that, right? And even if we come across the orbital parameters of this mission, as, as in this, uh, this satellite, Arriva satellite, you can see that. Perigee is 563. Comparing to the previous one, it is 215. Here it is on the higher side. And Apogee altitude is 619 kilometers. So what exactly is altitude, perigee altitude, apogee altitude? This altitude, what we mean, that is a distance from the surface of this, from sea level, from the surface of it towards the orbit, that is one of the points. Apogee is the farthest point because it's, a, it's an ellipse. Okay, we, we have already learned that. We'll see that, right? In the very basic way we are going to see. In relation to 3.7 degrees, it is tilted. The orbit is tilted from the equatorial plane. Then you have the period is 96, approximately 96 minutes, and this is 1.46 minutes. So these are the various things you need to keep in your mind when you learn astronautics. So this is the major, major content of this course. So space mission, we are going to learn about how to design a space mission. What are the major things you need to keep in mind? What are the engineering things you need to keep in mind? What are the mathematics you need to keep in mind? Everything, equations and everything, okay? So primary sequ sequential phase of a space mission, there are three, majorly we have three. The very first one, ascent through the atmosphere. Obviously, we have to rock, we have to launch a rocket for doing that, right? So we have to launch it. So the rocket is taking this satellite exactly on top of it, which we call as a payload, right? When the satellite is on top of it, we usually call it as payload. And it has to pass through the Earth's atmosphere. So then we can relate all the things related to aer aeronautical engineering. You know, atmosphere is there, the aerodynamic drag is there, everything you need to take care. Fins are really required for that, right? You can be have seen that, right, in the pictures. And then the second part is mission in space. After reaching the outer space, which we usually call as vacuum, but it is not pure vacuum, to be very precise. We learn that, space environment and stuff. So now you have the space mission in space, that is mission in space, anything you can consider. You can consider geostationary communication satellites, you can consider satellite technology, satellite, you know, telephone, you can consider satellite, you know, satellite telephone is sending the signals to the, you know, the satellite there, the phones, right? And then International Space Station astronauts are there, the microgravity experiments, everything can consider that. And even including, you, you can include planetary missions, mission to moon, mission to Mars. Maybe you can consider the Voyager mission, like Jupiter, Saturn, everything you can consider. And the third point is written over here, planetary entry is optional. It's related to, it is specific to particular mission. It's not all the missions are meant for this planetary entry. Most of, most of the times what happens when the, when the spacecraft is launched in space, you know, it is the life expectancy or lifespan of average, average in the average of all the space, right? life, life, you know, life expectancy, or maybe you can dance the lifespan of the spacecraft is approximately 10 to 15 years. Right. So till that time or for these many years, this will be completely functioning very well inside. You know, there are conditions apply, you know, you have to as if there's a technological difficulty, then to be they have to abandon these missions, right? So, but still to be on the safer side, you can say okay, 10 to 15 years, uh, you know, pointing out this spacecraft, they'll be uh, trying to walk this spacecraft for these many years. And after that, what happens? Some some they actually leave it there, like just like that, some agencies, some space agencies. Somewhere, some agency, they actually keep this space to a graveyard orbit. We'll, we'll learn that in detail. Okay, it is about the geostation, usually what that's the that's the point of it. And some 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 space agencies they actually take the spacecraft, they actually you know change the, the, the thrusters, the angle of thrusters and they actually you know uh, they actually fire that very small rockets which are called as thrusters and and they actually make this spacecraft to enter the atmosphere and burn it there only. You can destroy it, otherwise it will become a space debris. We are going to learn that's a very huge problem which is currently faced by all the space agencies. So because we have many thousands of spacecrafts, apart from there's thousands of collided, collided things, the small particles are also there. These are called space debris, you see that. And in the case of planetary uh, missions, what happens in this case of uh, the spacecraft will be entering the atmosphere, atmosphere of Mars, atmosphere, atmosphere of Earth as well. You know, if you are sending astronauts to space, they have to send it back to Earth. So yes, planetary entry is another major thing. So this is a very basic thing, universal of gravitation. So this is a major thing you have to learn. You have, if you are not thorough with this, we have already learned 
in your school days, right? So even you are, have learned in detail in your engineering level as well, engineering field is mainly gravitation, right? So it's a very, very simple thing. Let me actually uh, tell you what exactly it is. Universal law of gravitation, which is a fundamental of all the spacecraft missions. Anything, uh, anything, everything you can consider this. Okay, it says that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So more very, very basic thing I can say, if you have two different objects, they attract each other. Right, so the equation is basically G M1 M2 by this. I'm not going into detail because you are already learned in your law classes. And this G is very important, which is written on the bottom right corner of this slide. You can see it is called as universal gravitational constant. G is equal to 6.610 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kilogram square. This value is really very important. You have to remember this because we are going to see a lot of calculations related to this. Okay, keep that in mind. Maybe you had learned it, but if you have forgotten that. Just try to recover it. Okay. This is a concept which was coined, very first coined by Sir Isaac Newton. Right? You can see small Earth, and you can see different orbits. You can see slow, faster, orbital velocity, and escape velocity. So, what are these? Suppose you launch a rocket and then you keep you place a satellite over there. You have different functions, right? From different missions, one to revolve around the earth, one to leave Earth's gravity or gravitational force and enter into other different, you know maybe other different planets, right? To reach other different planets. So what is the main basic thing which Sir Isaac Newton had coined? You see in this picture, on the top of this picture, you have the earth and on top of it, you can see there is a cannon, right? Cannon is kept on a pretty platform. So when you take a cannon to a top, or when you take, a, when you take this cannon to a particular height and you just fire it. So cannon ball will be falling on the ground. Obviously it will fall on the ground, right? Trajectories or the projectile motion. You can think about projectile motion. So that is falling on here, you can see it's very slow because the energy is slow there. Now you shot this cannon with a more amount of energy, its velocity increases and it will, fall, it will fall farther, right? And again, you increase it. So what happens, it will fall somewhere here and again, you increase the energy. What happens to this cannon ball? This ball will reach back the same place. And say, for example, this, uh, you know, the velocity with which you ejected or you just fired this ball is around, you know, five kilometers or maybe not, not five, let me take it as, yeah, six, six kilometers per second. Six kilometers per second is a huge velocity. Okay, we are going to deal with this huge amount of velocities. Six kilometers in just one second. Okay, that's a velocity. So if you do that, this object will come back to this point. And when this ball is reaching the same point from which it was fired, it is also have the same velocity, right? The same, same velocity, six kilometers per second. So even though you had fired it, so you have fired this ball, so it is coming all the way, it is uh, is circling the earth and it is coming back in a view that it has to fall somewhere on the ground, but it is not falling on the ground because again it is coming to the same point, it has the same velocity, six kilometers per second. So what happens? It continues moving around it. Satellite, this is how it is done, it is done, right? So you can consider satellite or any spacecraft around any celestial object. You take a moon, you take Venus, you take anything. Mars, Jupiter, anything, if you're sending spacecraft there, and why it is revolving around the Earth? Spacecraft, in a very simple term, I can say spacecraft or satellite, especially satellite, okay? Satellite is an object which is continuously falling on the surface of the Earth, but it has not yet reached. It was about to reach, but it hasn't reached yet, right? because it is moving around it. And when you increase this velocity, which is called as escape velocity, it will escape from Earth's gravitational field. Right here, it is called as orbital velocity. The velocity with which it is revolving around any celestial object, we call it as orbital velocity. We can we can take any interplanetary missions. Escape velocity it depends on the planet. Okay, in our Earth, you had already learned in your law grade that is 11, 11 11.2 kilometer per second. That is from the surface of the Earth. When you go upwards, it reduces. Okay, because the gravitational force reduces the value of small g reduces. Right. So these are the equations. Uh, I'm not going in detail about this. So the equation is mentioned. If V is equal to G, square root of G M by R, it is called as orbital velocity, V orbit. So V orbit is orbital velocity. G, as I told you, is gravitational constant, universal gravitational constant, which is, uh, as of now, it is, it is a constant value, 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter cube, kilogram raised to minus 1, S raised to minus 1, minus 2. Okay, or Newton meter square per kilogram square. So it depends, like, in what way you coined it. So we have already learned it, right, in your lower grades. So you, you consider M, the small letter M, okay? 
It is mentioned small to m, that is mass of the Earth, moon, or any other planet around which the spacecraft is moving. This small to m is not the mass of the spacecraft or not the mass of the satellite. Very, very, very important point when you do the calculation part to design a trajectory, to design the, to find out the velocity of a satellite or velocity of a spacecraft. Keep in your mind, in this equation, there is no dependency on the mass of the spacecraft. So whatever you do, you have a, a an international space station. It's a very huge structure. So you have know, already seen that, right? The structure of the international space station. It is the largest structure ever kept in space by mankind. So to be to be uh, to tell you what is the length of it is almost hundred meters wide, hundred meters in length. And approximately 75 meters in length. It's huge. It's almost like uh, it's so vast. It's almost like you know football ground. It's a like normal football ground. So it's so huge it is. Okay. So so even if you put any other object in that particular particular orbit, that will also move in the same velocity, approximately seven kilometers per second. We'll see that in our upcoming slides. Okay. So it is nothing to do with the mass of the object, but mass of the planet around which it is moving. Even the case of escape velocity. So that is also the same, it's square root of 2 gm by r. It is, it is also relating to the mass of the planet, escape velocity. Okay, so in the case of Earth, it is 11.2 km per second. So if you throw any ball from the surface of the Earth at a speed of 11.2 km per second or more, that ball will never come back to Earth. It will escape from its gravity. Right, and you see the point r, the, the, the term r, the distance from the center point of the planet is not from the surface of the planet, it's from the center of it. So we'll see that in some calculations, we'll see that. And yes, this is the fundamental thing after universal law of gravitation, Kepler's laws. If you are, guys, let me tell you a very important thing. If you are not thorough with these Kepler's laws, it is very difficult for you to understand the very logical thing about the space missions, especially international, especially interplanetary missions, okay? And if you see this, this already you learned it. So let me, I'm not going to take a lot of time in this. So laws of orbits. So all planets move in elliptical orbits with sun situated at one of the foci of this ellipse. Because it's ellipse, so if you take a circle, it is only it is having only one center, but in ellipse, it has two centers. We don't call it as centers, but we call it as focus, foci. You can see that sun is at one of the focus, one of the foci you can see here. And here it is another one, two different points, right? So I'm not taking too much time here. So let me go to the next one. Second one, uh, line, jo line that joins any planet to the sun speeds equally as infinite intervals of time. So, so these are the major things. And so I hope you are, have learned it. Let's concentrate on this picture, guys. So that's the reason I have kept this uh, statement here. You have an Earth at one of the four, one of the four you can see here, right? And there's a satellite which is revolving around it. There are two different points. One is called as perigee and one is called as apogee, right? You can see this, there are two different points. So when the planet or when the satellite is at the farthest point, it moves slower. When it is coming closer, it is moving faster. That's how it is. That's how the motion is defined there. You can see that in this picture also it's kind of animated one. You can see that when it is farther away from this uh, planet Earth, the satellite moves a bit slower, right? It's actually moving slower. And when it is coming closer, it moves faster. This is used in designing orbits. So there are different types of orbits. We'll see that. Okay, so keep this in your mind. And the next one, how to find the time periods. We have this equation t, t squared proportion to r cube. You know, square of the time period of revolution is directly proportion to cube of the same major axis, right? We have already learned it. So t is equal to two pi square root of r cube by gm. Okay, so this is how we define, we find out what is the time period of these particular satellites, any planet or you can consider. Okay, so let's see these different details in our data here. Okay, this is the thing which you need to concentrate right now. So in the first table, I had mentioned only the planets. The second one, the satellites. So let's concentrate on the planets right now. Mercury, orbital period in days, 88 days. What do you mean by this? Mercury, the planet Mercury, the very first planet, the nearest planet to the sun. Mercury takes 88 days to complete one revolution around the sun. What is orbital velocity here? 47.4 kilometers per second. It's huge, 47.4 kilometers per second. Just in one second, it is moving 47 kilometers. It's huge. Now, do you take the case of Venus, moving farther away from the sun, from the central body? 224.7 days, time period increases. It moves slower, 35 kilometers per second, orbital velocity. You take the case of Earth, 365, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, you know, that's how we have this, uh, you know, leap year. So one year, right, it's a time period. 
29.8 orbital velocity 29.8 you take the case of mars 1.88 years time period increases it moves even slower 24.1 jupiter we take 11 years approximately 11.8 years orbital velocity 13.1 so from this data you see as you move away from the central object the time period increases and the object moves slower right orbital velocity decreases approximately earth is moving at a speed of 30 km approximately 30 km per second so that means everyone out here on this planet earth are moving at a speed of 30 kilometers per second and if you see the case of Mars, 24.1. So this is a very important fact, very important data. When you design interplanetary missions, because when you launch a satellite from the Earth, and if you are just pointing towards the Mars, okay, when you're pointing towards the Mars, what will happen? You have to launch a satellite. You have to make the satellite to move away from the Earth at a speed of more than or approximately equal to the speed of the Earth, orbital velocity, that is 29, approximately 30. And you have to make sure that you reach Mars by considering this velocity as well. So these are various parameters you need to keep in mind when you design the trajectories in the planetary orbits. Now you take the case of satellites, ISS, International Space Station. Perigee, there are two different factors I had mentioned here, perigee altitude and apogee altitude. Let's take the case of orbital periods, 92 minutes, okay? And orbital velocity is 7.66 kilometers per second. So that means the International Space Station right now, it's, it's moving around the Earth, and the astronauts are staying inside. Three to four people are there inside right now. And you can see that the speed, the velocity is 7.66. Those people are traveling at this speed, a huge speed. But when you go to Hubble Space Telescope, what is the time period? 95. And the orbital period reduces 7.59 compared to ISS 7.66. Now, if you see here, why, why, why did I mention this one? Now, you concentrate on perigee altitude and apogee altitude. Perigee, as I told you, the nearest point, and apogee is the farthest point. Right? So period is 418, here it is 422. Now, if you see the Hubble Space Telescope, it increased, it moves away from the surface of the Earth. Altitude means from the distance from the surface of the Earth, not from the center. Okay? It's 537, 540 approximately. You can consider it around five, you know, 530 or 540 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. As you move away from the central object, time period increases. You can see that 95 minutes instead of 92, and orbital velocity decreases. You next satellite, this another satellite, USA 244, it's a communication satellite. It is launched uh, by NASA and uh, it is kept in geostationary orbit. You know everything about geostationary orbit. You see this perigee altitude, 35,000, approximately 35, approximately 36,000, you can consider both these. It's almost circular, it's not completely circular, it's almost circular. You can see the geostationary orbits are almost circular. Eccentricity is approximately equal to zero. Okay, that's how we actually launch it. Right, now you see the orbital period approximately one day, 24 hours, approximately. Orbital velocity, you see, three kilometers per second. It reduces, it's huge, it's so far from it. Now if you see, three kilometers per second. So when you move away from it, the velocity is three, three here it is three kilometers per second, right? So that means if you move away from the central object, the velocity decreases and time period increases. These are the major characteristics you need to keep in mind when you design any kind of spacecraft missions. Now last one. I took the case of moon. How far is it? It's almost 3.85 kilometers, 3.85 lakh kilometers from the surface, from, from the surface of the Earth. It's not from the sub from, from the center of the Earth, not from the surface of the Earth. That's the reason I had mentioned the bracket perigee. It's not an altitude, it's perigee. Okay, and apogee. We'll see that what are the major things. And you see the orbital period is 27 days. It's increased from 24 hours compared to the USA to 244 satellite, geostationary satellite. What is the orbital velocity of the moon around the Earth? It's just one kilometer per second. So these parameters you need to keep in mind when you launch a satellite towards or when you launch a spacecraft, anything related to the moon mission, Apollo missions, the Chandrayaan mission, you have to keep this in mind. This is the velocity with which the moon is revolving around. It's a very tough thing you need to consider, right? So let's concentrate on this trajectory of Earth-Moon mission. So this diagram you can see here, this is a very, uh, very, very basic diagram, which was followed which was uh, you know uh, which was followed by apollo missions especially by nasa so you can see that there's an earth and there's a moon so there are different uh, phenomena there is a different phenomena there are different stages you can consider the launch is there then translunar injection we are going to learn that in detail in, in our course then lunar transfer orbit the transfer correction manually tcm very 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 important thing tcm okay so we can't just leave the space from just like that we have to sense it with the help of sensors 
are kept in the spacecraft, we have to find out how the spacecraft is moving. Is it moving on correct course, which we have already predetermined? If it is moving away from it, we have to make some corrections with the help of thrusters, we have the gyroscopes and everything we have. It. We'll see that in detail. Okay, then you have to inject into lunar orbit, which we call as LOI, lunar orbit insertion. So if you see this one, there was a small data mentioned on the, the top, on the bottom right corner. So it's Apollo 11. Okay, so I got the data from Apollo 11 mission. So launch date was on July 16, 1969. Lunar orbit insertion, LOI, is July 19, on July 19, 1969. It took three days to reach. Just three days. Right? That's the beauty of the spacecraft. It's so it moves, it moves so fast. Now, if you see here, in the case of Apollo 11, this spacecraft was following a path. Initially, they started with a, an orbit around the Earth one and a half times, and then it was kept in the transfer orbit, lunar transfer orbit. Keep that in mind. That is the reason it took less time there, out there. After three days, it reached the moon. The gravitation, it, 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 it got attracted towards the gravitational force of the moon. But in the case of Chandrayaan 2, it's the data from Chandrayaan 2. So this is this animated picture. You can I hope you are able to see it, guys. Everyone can uh, see that it is moving around the, the satellite. The Chandrayaan 2 is moving around the Earth a few times. Okay. So let me actually uh, hold it here so that you can you'll be able to understand. Let me let me actually take some time. Uh, so you can see that it is moving away from it and then it is reaching the green orbit, so orbit of the moon. Okay. So launch date is mentioned as 22 July, 22nd of July 2019. Correct. And lunar orbit insertion loi very important thing 20th of august it took 29 days to reach there but in the case of apollo just three days that is the reason we usually hear the details the technical details we say that you know the missions the interplanetary missions or the chandra missions are cheaper than other missions right this is the major reason cost why we are able to do this in less cost this is the reason we are taking more time to do it because we are doing multiple orbit racing maneuvers when the spacecraft is at perigee you can literally see here in the previous picture you can see only one, one there is only one orbit around it more precisely one and a half but then it is inject, injected into the lunar transfer orbit but here if you see multiple times six to seven times so it is taking time because if you do it in this way, you have to eject, you have to fire a rocket for more number of time and you have to increase velocity, which we call as, in an astronautical term, we can say it's delta V. We'll see that we learn in detail. Whenever you raise an orbit, whenever you raise a spacecraft to different orbits, we have to take off delta V factor. This velocity, delta V is a change in velocity. So that is designed in such a way that you have to consider the final orbit. You have to take the, take the case of the initial orbit. How much velocity you require to to reach the final orbit so these are the major things you have to take care okay so let me take let me take this okay here so multiple times it is raised multiple times the thrusters are fired the small rockets are inside the spacecraft so these are fired okay and now as i told you there are three major different things in a you know in a, in a mission okay the very first one is ascent through the atmosphere mission in space planetary entry Okay, so now we just concentrate on the stem planet energy and mission space. Okay, so now we have already we, we have entered this uh, this particular uh, thing, right? Now you see this one is a, it's a very uh, famous, very recent, very recent mission. It's the Mars 2020. You already know it's a mission of NASA. It's a very uh, amazing mission, to be very frank. So Mars 2020, they actually uh, you know landed a rocket on the surface of Mars, right? So let's take, you can, you can see this picture. This picture is uh, is clicked in one of the lab laboratories in NASA. You can see the, the heat shield around it. On the top, you can see the, the you know, the, 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 the back cover. You can see that the, it's also a shield to protect the spacecraft inside. There's a spacecraft inside. The Land Rover is the helicopter is there. Okay, so yeah. So this was launched. And now you see this picture. Okay. Uh, in this picture, you can see there are two different door kind of things coming out of it. So let me go back to this slide now. Very first thing, ascent through atmosphere. The spacecraft has to reach Mars anyway, right? So it has to move through the Earth's atmosphere. So there is atmosphere and we have to protect it. So we call it as payload payload fairing. Okay, so inside this payload fairing, we, are, we keep install the spacecraft inside. So this is a picture you can see that this, it has come, just come out of the Earth's atmosphere, approximately about 100 to 
120 kilometers. So after that, you can just remove it. Almost, if you, if you see the live launches, okay, most of the live launches will be happening. And if you see that, uh, you know, if you have noticed it, these will be jettisoned. That's the term which we use, jettisoned from the main body, the, the payload uh, fairing you can consider, to be jettisoned after it has entered the space or after, you know, after it, yeah, when it is moving through the atmosphere, it has to keep it there. Because we have to protect because of air and because because air friction we have atmosphere drag and everything we have to consider, right? The thermal we, it is also called a thermal shield, right? So after leaving the Earth's atmosphere, we have to jettison it. We have to remove it, right? And now it is entering the interplanetary trajectory. It's very very important when we design these trajectories. So the launch date of Mars 2020 here it is mentioned. Uh, it's the 30th July 2020 in the previous year. And it arrived some few days before, 18th February, 2021. Just a few days ago, it, it arrived. It. So comparing this, compare the mission by Mangalyan mission. Compare the mission of Mangalyan. Initially, what happened? The space flight was kept in orbit multiple times. As I told you in the case of Chandrayaan, the same things followed in the case of Mangalyan mission as well. I don't have the picture right now. We'll see that in detail now on the course. We are going to learn, you know, various technical details about all these, all these famous missions. Okay. And in this case, what happens? Multiple times it is raised above the Earth, and when it is about to, be, when when they find, okay, this is the trajectory they have to acquire, the spacecraft left it. So it's very very cheaper to be frank. That's the reason uh, Mangala mission is cheaper than other missions. That's a, that's a major reason. It's one of the reasons. Okay. Now, if you see here, arrival date is 11th, sorry, 18th February 2021. It took 203, 203 days from its launch, from its launch, and this launch window. Happen. See, see, you can't you can't launch any spacecraft or any satellite or any spacecraft any time from the surface of the to Mars. No, not possible. If suppose if you launch a satellite here today, and maybe if you want to launch a, a, a satellite towards Mars, maybe next month, every single month, you can't do that. There is a term called as launch window. This launch window appears every 26 months. So this is approximately two years. So that is the most Cost effective, that is the most efficient launch window or efficient mission. If you want to do a very efficient uh, spacecraft mission, you have to launch the spacecraft, you know, in that particular launch window. Otherwise, it's, it's very difficult because you have to you have to uh, load more amount of fuel and you had to you had to do more amount of course corrections. You had to you had to supply more amount of you know you have to inject it with more amount of delta V. I told you delta V, right? So that's a major factor in cost cutting. It's, it's huge, right? So, see, uh, let me tell you the case of uh, Mangalyan mission or even any Indian mission. Uh, you know, it, there is an article which I have read. So it says, Ayusaro says that in order to put one kilogram of one kilogram mass in orbit, they have to spend 25 lakhs of rupees approximately. Just one kilogram. You take small ball or maybe small iron, iron, you know, prism or something. And if, it's, if it weighs one kilogram, you have to spend 25 lakhs of rupees to keep it in an orbit around the Earth. So it's a huge. So even if you consider fuel, liquid fuel, mostly you keep it in liquid fuel there. So if you if you just consider that, if you have maybe two kgs of liquid fuel, it costs more. So that's a very, very important factor to design optimization because it's optimization. Right? This is a very important factor. And now it has reached. Okay, it is about to go. So now if you see here in this slide, in this line, you can see it's kind of animated one, it's a simulated. Uh, diagram. You can see the date on top left corner and the constant on this velocity on the top, on the bottom left corner. You can see the 29. You remember the, the orbital velocity of the Earth is approximately 30. So when it is moving away from the Earth, it enters a phase called as heliocentric phase. In the case of Mars mission or any planetary mission, consider more precisely consider about the, uh, you know, the Mars mission. Okay, when the Earth is revolving around it, it is under the gravitational force of the Earth. When it leaves the Earth, it is under the gravitational force of the Sun. And it is about to enter Mars, it is under the gravitational force of Mars. Very complicated, correct? There are three different phases geocentric phase, Earth centric phase. Second one, heliocentric phase, Sun centric phase. Third one, areocentric phase or Mars centric phase. Very important concept. And even if there are any asteroids or anything related to, you know, anything over there in, the, in this part, you have to consider that also. That's the reason they actually phase certain terms called as perturbation, perturbation of it. 
we'll see that in the course we'll see that and we have and because of these other other you know celestial objects the course the the, the trajectory will be changed the path of the trajectory will be changed so we have to correct it in, in between that so the track so we call it as a trajectory correction maneuvers we can can consider so here if you see then it is about to reach the mars its, re, it's velocity is reducing the, the bottom left corner you can see that 25 kilometer per second you can see that right okay all right so now we have learned it properly right so this is how it is done we'll see that we'll see in detail uh, in, in our course this how this is designed and everything we're going to do that okay so as it is moving farther away from the central object it reduces velocity that's the property of the orbit. Okay. Now, the third phase, the, the space mission, I told you, the third point, planetary entry. So this is the Perseverance rover's entry, descent, and landing profile, which happened on 18th February 2021. So this is what the thing which happened over there. So in the case of planetary entry, re-entry, we call it as re-entry or planetary entry. Okay, more precisely in this case, we call it as planetary entry. Okay. So here you can see it is entering the atmosphere of the Mars. In in the case of Mars, the Mars, the, the atmosphere of Mars is very thin. The pressure there is just one hundredth. Okay, if you remember the the pressure, the surface pressure of Earth's atmosphere is ten to the power five pascal. In Mars, it is ten to the power three pascal. Just one hundredth it is. So we have to take care of many very different. And and in this one, in the Mars twenty twenty mission, Perseverance, you can see there's a parachute. It's the largest parachute ever. Ever sent to any any planet, any out out outer planet. Okay, so now you see it's it's it is the structure of this uh, you know uh, the spacecraft. Perseverance is there inside, and there's a heat shield you can consider. You can see here, right? And these the the, the kind of the back the po back portion. There is there are solar panels. There. You might have seen the pictures already, right? And it is about to enter the atmosphere. This thing is separated. Then you have atmospheric entry. Time e e means entry plus zero minute. This, at this particular time, it has entered atmosphere the mars atmosphere okay then peak heating obviously atmospheric friction that's the reason we have a heat shield there right you can see that then peak deceleration then guided entry is more uh, advanced way and they have parachute deploy yes to reduce the velocity entry velocity right and then you can heat shield separation why because you are sure you are just keeping in mind that when it is about to reach about to land on the surface you have to remove that heat shield because you have already protected the spacecraft from this atmospheric heating now it is moving in a very less velocity compared to the entry velocity okay and now what happens is these are different uh, different you know technological details and finally it is removed and uh, removed from the main thing and the parachute is also removed from the main body the perseverance rover and it is landed Okay, so these are the different things. This is the very first time they, uh, they, you know, they installed mobility deploy. It's kind of a crane sort of thing and just doing that. Okay, so already, already learned about it. Okay, so yes, now we learned it. And this is the major thing. This is a, this is a very astonishing thing, which, uh, which I feel. Uh, so the very first picture clicked by the Perseverance uh, rover, when it is exactly landed on the surface of uh, you know, the planet Mars. So you can see that the very first image NASA's Perseverance rover sent back after touching down on Mars on February 18, 2021. This is black and white. Uh, because it's the very first one, so they they need to get uh, the assurance. They need to get the confirmation that okay, so Perseverance rover had landed. So after this, they will get more colorful and more detailed picture in in the few in the coming days. You can check their website there. And you can see uh, the scientists inside the Mission Control Center at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. They have received it, and this is a beautiful thing over there. This hard work definitely pays off, guys. Right. So yeah, so these are the major things. I hope you had understood uh, an amazing things. Uh, it's a very glimpse of very basic concepts about uh, the astronautics and amazing things about um, the you know you know the interplanetary missions and uh, the rockets and the satellites and various different things you need to keep in mind when you attend the course. Okay, uh, so guys, I hope you had uh, enjoyed it. And uh, sorry, sir, I had finished this. Uh, sorry, sir, if you would like to say something. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, it was a nice session. Uh, so we'll be having some question and answer session now, sir. If they will be having some doubt, uh, guys, you all can uh, just share your doubt in chat section, or you can just unmute and ask directly. Okay, no issue. So for timing, sir, I uh, I have one question, sir. Suppose I want to start my career in space technology. So okay. what path will you suggest in terms of real time point of view in a starting of my career? Okay, okay. 
Okay, so in the case of uh, starting a career in space technology, one thing uh, everyone, all the students who are attending this one, you can actually consider. Uh, it doesn't matter in which field, in which engineering field you are. It doesn't matter. Okay, so you can be a mechanical engineer, you can be electrical engineer, electronics engineer, and you have uh, whatever other fields you have. You can always pursue the space engineer, even aeronautical engineer, aerospace engineer. You can consider. So anyone can pursue, but make sure that you are. Uh, very thorough with the basics. That's the major thing you have to keep in mind. And, and it is completely depending on what profile you want to you want to uh, you know pursue your career. See, in the space sector, if you consider space sector, it is a it is a very vast field, engineering level, and it's it is interdisciplinary. If you have seen the space missions which I have shown you sometime back, launch, right, launch of a rocket, then you have the astro you know, astronomical part which is revolving around the earth, and then it is moving maybe to a different planet into planetary missions and then re-entry again is coming out coming there right entry and atmosphere and everything so so if you remember thermal shield when i when i told you about the launch of a spacecraft i told you about the you know the payload fairing which is jettisoned right that is coming about the thermal thermal criteria right so thermal engineering if you have learned thermal engineering anyone can follow this but make sure that first of all you need to fix it okay this is the field which i, I want to work in the space sector there are many fields you consider if you are too good in propulsion you can concentrate on rockets, the fuels, liquid fuels, right? So these are things you have to keep keep in mind. And even thrusters are there in some space, right? When you just keep a satellite over there. Uh, so uh, so what I what I'm going to share and in, share a, a knowledge uh, that when I when I did my uh, MTech dissertation work in ISRO Center, so I I got an amazing opportunity to visit uh, one of the laboratories there. So there they were testing the thrusters, iron thrusters. Like that's completely pure pure chemistry there, right? Iron thrusters, which was kept in usually kept in geostationary satellites. So every single day, they they have to raise the spacecraft. They have to raise the spacecraft. Otherwise, what happens? See, you know the spacecraft, the geostationary satellites are kept in the orbit, which is approximately thirty six thousand kilometers from the Earth, right? So every day, the the term called as the orbital decay happens. So it comes down. No, we are we are not supposed to keep it down, right? We have to keep it there only. So they have to fire the rocket to keep it in place. So that is another thing. You know, if you're too good a chemical engineer, you can actually pursue it. And even if you consider the case of astronautics, aerospace, you have to learn. And the case of when a satellite is in, in outer space, you have to send the signals, radio technology, right? Radio signals, you have to send it. So everything, everything is there. So I, I yeah. So uh, the major thing I would like to say, try to fix what field you want to per, you want to pursue in space technology, and then go forward with it. It's not like you have to learn aerospace engineering only to pursue a career. No, definitely not. Any field, any person who is working in any field can, can pursue a career in space technology. Sir, uh, Mayuri is asking, uh, can the spacecraft can arrive to Earth after the lunch? Uh, can you say it one more time? A bit louder? Uh, yes. Can the spacecraft arrive to Earth after the lunch? Uh, okay, can the spacecraft arrive towards the Earth? Yes, after lunch. Uh, okay, okay, I'm not getting the. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it mentioned in the chat? Uh, yes, it is mentioned in the chat section. Uh, okay, so yeah, sir, so can the spacecraft can arrive to Earth after launch? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah I got it, got it, got it. Okay, so it's a wonderful question, Mayur. Uh, so uh, you say the spacecraft can arrive to Earth after launch. Okay, so there are, as I told you, there are different types of missions. Okay, the normal, the usual missions are like you keep the satellite over there and you leave it there and you come back. Come back as in the rockets will be coming back to Earth. Sometimes what happens, it will be, uh, you know, entering the atmosphere, it will be burning up. What happens if a satellite is over there? It is revolving around the Earth for so many uh, years. 10 to 15 years and what happens some satellites they keep it there only right some some space agencies keep these satellites there only. they don't just do anything but nowadays what happens they have to take it back to earth to burn it in that atmosphere otherwise space debris will be there okay and there are certain things called as there are certain uh, certain uh, things called as you know the the uh, entry you know you have to launch a satellite you have to launch a spacecraft especially take the case of dragon capsule by spacex you can consider that you have to you have to send astronauts there in the International Space Station and, it, and you have to take them back. So we have to take them as so a space craft, you have to take them back. So entry is very important. And if you consider the case of satellite, just satellite, uh, the primary mission of the satellite is not 
taking it back to the earth. Okay, so it is completely optional. Most of the time, these days, what happens? They actually try to keep, they try to uh, make the satellite to enter atmosphere to to burn it there. So primary mission, we no, we don't actually keep it there in space. Sorry, we don't uh, make it to enter into the Earth's atmosphere, atmosphere. So yeah, now it's clear, right? Sir, how do we select trajectory? Okay, in the case of trajectory, it comes about uh, the moon and sorry, not the moon, the Mars mission. As I told you, the launch window happens every twice, every once in two years, the cost effective one. So what you need to do when you launch a satellite or when you, when you launch a spacecraft, you have to consider on which day you have to reach the Mars. I told you around 200 days it will take, right? So right now, you know, it, it is February end, right? So you have to consider after 200 days, you fix the date and you fixing the date at that particular point, where will the Mars be? Okay, right now the, the Mars is moving. Earth is also moving, correct? So you have to fix at what particular point the Mars will be at, after 200 days. So you have to eject, you have to design a trajectory in such a way that after 200 days, it should reach there, not the current position of the Mars. So there are a lot of things. It, it, not, it cannot be answered in one single statement, a lot of things coming there. So this is how it is, the tra trajectory is designed in the case of interplanetary missions and in the case of uh, you know, normal satellite missions, you can actually design it accordingly, you know, where we have to keep it. So that's the reason I told you there are certain parameters, orbital parameters. Exactly. So fix exactly. The first. first, you fix yeah. the orbit. At this orbit, you have to launch. At this distance, you have to keep it there. At this orientation, you have to place it. Everything you design first, then you launch. That's how it is done. Good morning, sir. <clears throat> My name is Arjun Saibo. I'm a yes, final sir. year, I'm a final year aerospace engineering student. I'm sorry, uh, final year aerospace engineering student. Okay. So I'm very much interested in astrodynamics. So it's related to orbits only. Yeah, so yeah. I was want to know, sir, what kind of skills we should generate uh, in order to be in like a uh, career field, like to make careers and you know, all in this field. Okay. Okay. Great. Wonderful question, Arjun. Uh, so in the case of astrodynamics, it's a very beautiful. Uh, field of astronautics. Uh, it is related to designing the satellite in different orbits. So you had to learn about the basis of the orbits, right? That's how it is. Astrodynamics and anything related to uh, the, the planets also, you can learn how the planet is revolving around it. Okay, we call this orbital mechanics in a different way. So in the case of our, uh, our, you know, astrodynamics, you have to make sure that you're very thorough with the fundamental physics and engineering mathematics. All the different things you have to be very fundamental. You have to be very thorough with it. And then if you want to uh, pursue a career in this, make sure that you achieve more amount of, uh, you know, technical details related to astrodynamics, especially what happens in astrodynamics. Uh, in the, just sometime I told you about the orbital design. This is, it is a part of astrodynamics. If you keep a satellite there, you have to understand what way you have to, it has to be oriented. Attitude control, we can, we can call. So these are things coming there, you know, how to orient, how, how to make sure that, you know, the orbit, the satellite is oriented in that particular way. It's coming under astro astrodynamics, what way it has to be oriented and what path it has to follow, all these different things. So make sure that you, uh, you, you know, you have this kind of knowledge in it. Uh, sir, I want to add in this, uh, actually what I am observing from your PPTs and all, uh, these all are your experience experience which you have uh, taken in ISRO uh, during your MTEC digital distance. Correct, correct, yeah. Is it? Uh, actually, I am also from the same background. I have also done my master digital distance from uh, BARC. Okay, so, great. So, uh, in pulse power system. Uh, so, I will uh, suggest Arjun, you just join, huh? actually you are in BTEC, so you just join master. some, you just join some real-time uh, industrial Amma? courses. Okay. May you just unmute yourself? Master. Yes. So I'll suggest you to join some real time experience courses that are available. Uh, uh, this, uh, right now, we are also uh, launching a space course here in a skill design also. You can join and explore the things. Okay. So, sir, there is another question. Uh, so, where Ah, sir. Yes, sir. There is another question. Yeah. So here we are two students of same class and we are aerospace student. So how do we choose a career in this for a research in a space? 
Okay, uh, you're talking about the finally students, right? You're talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, bachelor degree are they in B Tech course or masters? Sir, they are in uh, aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineering that is in B Tech, right? Yes, B Tech, B Tech. Okay, okay. So I suggest to you, uh, the students, uh, you can pursue if you want to pursue research in this field, try to get a master degree. Okay, so maybe exactly want... that's what I am also suggesting. Yes, yes. So master degree is, is amazing thing. There are different types of master degree. M Tech, uh, especially I am I'm, uh, I'm kind of a fan of IAC International. Uh, sorry, uh, Indian uh, the Science and the Indian Institute of Science and Technology Science uh, in in in, in what do I say in Bangalore, right? IAC. Uh, so yes, there. IAC. Yes, yes. IAC. So there, uh, uh, there are different courses in the case in the Department of Aerospace Engineering Department. So there, there are two different programs there. One is an M Tech degree. It's a proper, proper mechanic, proper, you know, what you say, the technological uh, course. And one is M Tech with research. So I would suggest you to go there and to pursue their career over there. It's, it's, a, it's a research oriented degree, master degree. So, yeah. So after that, you will get a lot of exposure from there. It's IAS, your business. Exactly, master. exactly. And if you will do some internship uh, during your B Tech, that will be of great help during your research and all. Perfect. Yes, yes. It's better if we, uh, if the students can pursue that final project in industries, especially in, if you have exactly, kind of, exactly, yeah, especially ISRO. If you do that, this, this is amazing. also my experience, sir. <laughs> yeah, even same year, same year. Even uh, when I was doing there, uh, you know, I got a lot of opportunity to to see to talk to to, to talk to amazing scientists there, and if I, if I obviously, obviously, experience which I had uh, I had there. Uh, it was in 2010 uh, end or 11 2011 okay so at that time there was i was sitting inside a lab and i'm just remembering my uh, my olden days okay so i was sitting in the lab and there are a lot of scientists there inside they were doing something about the math lab and the softwares and everything i remember there was one particular uh, scientist a lady scientist uh, she was doing uh, some presentation so before that she has to do his presentation before that she was doing some kind of rover kind of thing so later on i came to know that you know if you remember chandrayaan 2 uh, India launched and uh, the rover was supposed to land properly there, right? So at that time, I remember they were doing the programming things about the rover. They were actually simulating the the, uh, the lunar surface. So that was not anything to do with my exactly, exactly. Uh, that my simple life that scientists have that we can't recognize who they are. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So they were little. I, I saw that they were actually talking something about yes. the. There were four wheels. I remember, still remember four wheels in the Chandrayaan two rover and they're, they're simulating the surface of the mark sorry so surface of the moon and then they are just you know playing it playing it as in playing the software so a lot of studies behind it so i came to know but you know i just it's an amazing thing you know uh, Midun, sir there is one uh, question uh, yeah sir uh, right now what are the courses that uh, what are the software that we are going to teach in a skilled desire in astrodynamic course which we are launching Okay, so here uh, I'll be I'll be giving you some some small information about uh, the the uh, major thing called as one is one is very important. MATLAB is really very important. MATLAB it's it's applicable for almost all the branches. Another thing is satellite toolkit. You know, satellite toolkit. You can see SDK. You can consider the software which uh, which we use to design the orbits. It's an amazing software. So uh, so I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just give the information about that SDK. So a satellite toolkit is a major one. Especially in the case of astrodynamics. Uh, Arjun, actually, yeah. if you need more details, uh, you can just contact on that number which I have shared. You will be getting the whole content breakup of this course, okay? Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, just call on that number and ask for the content what they are going to deliver. You will be getting the whole details, okay? I hope okay, you got sir. the number. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Continue. Uh, what you are saying yeah, yeah okay so that's it so any other questions uh, yes sir there are questions uh, sir uh, can we do master in any other countries and can we get a work in india a space research center yes, okay yes yeah. obviously mayur, sir. mayur right mayur is yes obviously you can get the job yeah yeah yes yes definitely yes uh, so, uh, the question so let me read it uh, can we do masters in any other countries yes and we can get a work in engines Research and yes, definitely yes. Uh, okay, so we can do a masters there, and I, I would like to say you have to be uh, you have to very specific about your goal. You have to fix the goal and then do it. There are, I have seen many many students what they did. Uh, even if I consider by my uh, my classmates also, they did the course there with me, and then they are not working in this field because 
because what they actually facing is they have to support their family and financial different things and they are not ready to struggle for their the, the, their career so what they do they choose a different field so please don't do that guys if you are very clear about your career just follow that whatever happens whatever time it happens so definitely you will definitely get it and in the case of uh, doing a masters abroad consider that you know you have to get a scholarship because uh, doing a masters abroad especially in the field of space technology is very very costly literally very costly so get a get a scholarship and then do it otherwise just we have amazing uh, amazing you know institutes over here especially iisc and iist these are two major things in the institute of space space technology have it right so there uh, you can can press there are two major things and even iits they have uh, some some few iits are having it and i i prefer if you are not uh, if you're not getting any kind of admissions in other pri private institutes related to uh, space technology uh, don't feel bad. Try to concentrate in IAC. It's the best one you can do it. Best one. If you don't, so let me tell you uh, my experience here. Uh, so uh, let's not do let's not do your masters in any institute which they uh, any institute offering space technology. Please don't go with that. Okay, you have to choose a university in such a way that you have to make sure that the space technology is amazingly taught there. Okay, there are certain small institutes they offer space technology. Please don't go there. This one go yeah. there. So you have to choose the space technology which is taught amazingly in that particular country. Read the reviews, talk to people there, and get the data, and then you pursue it. Take time, take time. There is no urgency that you have to do your master's exactly, right now. Exactly, exactly. And if you are in first year of master and you have already taken, just try for ISRO, okay? Try to do your, uh, your master project from ISRO, okay? Try it. There are uh, vacancy, okay? I think, uh, sir, they take 40 students all over India, no? Pardon? How much uh, MTech student they take from uh, India, ISRO? About the, about the number of students you're talking about? Yes, yes, number of students in master's. You know, can you say it one, one, one more time? Can you say the question one yeah. more time? Yes, how many students they are taking for MTech dissertation uh, in, uh, in ISRO? Okay, dissertation work, I'm not sure about the count as of now. I'm not sure about it. About the MTech degree, it is. it depends on the project and it depends on the the marks, but BTEC they have a count yearly basis they have a count. But MTech when I I'm not sure about the the number right now. But when I was doing it, there was no particular count for it. You can directly contact the uh, you know the the head of the department okay. if you have contacts, you can get it. But there are vacancies there. You can try it there oh, also. Okay, no issue. Center specific. Center specific. Uh, Gaurav is asking what should our step to get internship at. Goro, uh, please type the complete question. If you want to do internship at a skilled desire in this course, you just need to uh, contact on that number or visit our website and you need to just register there, okay? How to become an astronaut? What is the pathway? Alha Kapadia has mentioned, okay, how to become an astronaut, what is so the pathway? They are uh, very curious about the course. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes, so yes. Anyone can become an astronaut, if you remember. Uh, uh, Columbia, uh, not Columbia, the special challenger, the teacher was flown there in that mission, a teacher, school teacher. <laughs> so yeah, in, I'm talking about the NASA now. So yeah, anyone can become an astronaut, but make sure that you work really hard. And uh, mostly what I have seen, you know, the, the aircraft pilots, they are uh, they are getting into uh, into this astronaut, uh, of an astronaut uh, what is the training center. Niranjan, please mute yourself. So, in the case of India, they have already started with their already selected our next uh, astronaut, astronaut astronaut training and everything. So, they're sent to Russia for the training and everything. So, yeah. So, they actually choose the pilots usually. Okay. Sir, there is one question from Santos. Sir, I have Bachelor of Engineering in Information Science and working in IT from last seven years. What are my opportunity to pursue masters in any field in space astronomy? Okay, space and astronomy. Okay, you're working for the past seven years in IT sector. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, so, okay, so you're going to you're going to do a career shift. It's an amazing thing. If you're so much interested in that, just pursue it. That's that's right. That, that's a great thing. Okay, Sir, so uh, one student is continuously asking, can you suggest a good book for learning astrodynamics and orbital me uh, mechanics? Okay, okay. Uh, so let me I'll be answer this, Santosh, uh, sir. So let's just do that. So master's degree. So you have are asking, uh, Santosh, what, what are my uh, opportunities to pursue 
per se, okay, per se, masters in any field of. Okay, so what you need to do, you have to choose a university and then you can apply for it. It doesn't matter you're from uh, IT sector or, you know, uh, bachelor degree information science, it doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter as you have to check the eligibility criteria for that particular university to pursue it. So in the case of IAC, which I had sometime back just I mentioned, in the case of IAC, this, there's a course, MTech course, both research and engineering one, two different types of courses. And there they have clearly mentioned these are the background, these are the students, these are the, you know, the, the field you have to take care in the case of, you know, BTEC degree. You can go for aerospace, you can go for computer science, you can electrical, electronics, anything. But I haven't noticed IT there, but you have to contact this respective university to get the details. And, and yes, and next question is from Chanjay. Uh, so can you suggest a good book for learning astrodynamics and orbital mechanics? Okay, so in the case of astrodynamics, orbital mechanics, I don't have the information right now. I don't have the track of it right now. Maybe I'll just do that during the course. When you join the course, I'll just give you some more. Yes, some definitely more. during the course, we'll be providing you all the softwares yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the study material. You need not to buy any book and all, okay? So any question? Yes, sir, there is another question. Uh, Currently, I am studying MSc in Applied Geology. How can I enter to NASA or any satellite project or research? Okay, that's a great question. MSc in Applied yes, Geology. Exactly. Okay, okay. So that's fine. You can actually do that. Uh, maybe uh, I don't. I don't have the information about the geology uh, over here. So uh, you can actually get the details. Like you know, uh, if in the case of uh, you just you know, visit the website of NASA once and see what are the area they are researching. Okay. And, and even I can say we'll get case, the, no. yeah, in this case, I can say uh, remote sensing is actually uh, related to this one. So we can actually do that remote sensing and about the how the you know how they do the satellite technology over there in the case of remote sensing. You can actually pursue that. If you're so much interested, please do that. Yeah, as as uh, so as has mentioned, you have to you have to go to the website and collect a lot of information from there, uh, and then you can actually perceive it. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? Sir, I have very uh, uh, one very interesting question. Okay. Actually, okay. In, uh, actually, in last year we we talked lots about Corona, Corona, Corona. So, uh, will you tell me the present scenario? What is the impact of Corona on this space industry? Okay, present scenario is everything is normal right now. Everything is back to normal. You can see the many launches are happening and uh, all the things are happening right now. But in the previous year it was very tough, and uh, you can say a lot of uh, work related things are not happening at that time. So now it's perfectly fine, completely, almost everything is fine. So uh, relating to the job or relating to the master degree or anything. So not need to worry about it. You can pursue it as often, just like the normal days. Okay, sir, uh, one more question uh, here they have posted. Uh, I have uh, searched in all IIT site, even IIT, there is no specialization in astronomics or orbit in master. Sir, can you suggest any college of masters? See, uh, you have to visit it regularly. What happened now? In every session, they used to update regarding their courses. Okay. So you, you need to visit again. And uh, as Sir has said, IASC Bangalore is offering the course. Isn't it, Sir? IASC, uh, so let me actually read that. Yeah. Uh, IIT, right? You're talking about the IIT. Yes, they, they are saying that there are no IIT is offering the course. Uh, I don't know the present scenario. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what I noticed in the case of IITs and IAC, they don't have any specific course related to space technology. They have orbital uh, astrodynamics or orbital mechanics. That's what you said. Uh, Arjun has mentioned. So that is they don't they don't have the masters in it. You have to go abroad for that. So here, especially in IAC, uh, they have the you know the aerospace engineering department. They have. Four major things, as you had mentioned, IIT has has only specialization in propulsion, control, and aerodynamics. And these are the major, and even one more thing, structures. So these are the four major branches of aerospace engineering masters they offer. So only specific to space technology, they don't they don't have it. But I prefer, I would like to say maybe you can go for control. Uh, so you have mentioned propulsion, even that is also required. Right? For the rocket propulsion is also required. So that's what I said. If you are, if you are so clear about where you have to go, it's very simple. Otherwise. <laughs> What to take, where to go, and we're getting confused. So first of all, take time. We are not in a hurry. You know, spend one year. Maybe you can search your details and then pursue it in such a way that you get your cup of tea. Exactly, sir. Exactly the same thing I used to say in my class. Uh, suppose you are very clear in your objective, definitely you will get the success. For example, uh, 
सर आई विल टेक लिटिल एग्जांपल सपोज यू वांट टू मेक चिकन बिरयानी टुडे ऑन संडे ओके फ्रॉम लास्ट नाइट यू आर वेरी क्लियर दैट यू हैव टू कुक चिकन बिरयानी बट ऑल ऑफ सडन 10 मिनट बिफोर समबडी केम एंड सेड दैट यू हैव टू कुक वेज बिरयानी ऑब्वियसली दैट टेस्ट विल नॉट कम ओके सो यू शुड बी वेरी क्लियर इन योर विजन ओके बी be crystal clear i will suggest you be very crystal clear if you want to go in research if you want to go in industry just make a single objective okay don't put your leg on two boat okay just be on one boat definitely will get the success okay because you see whatever scientists as uh, midun sir has met i have also met with some uh, many scient great scientists from brc and all they are also very common people okay when we know, uh, came to know about their lifestyle their uh, starting career we are shocked how they can achieve this but they have done tremendous efforts in their life okay they have compromised from their comfort level you know the first step towards greatness is nothing but ensuring that nobody work harder than you around you you got my point so like that you have to proceed okay be very clear in your vision uh, sir there is another question do isro or other one more thing i would like to add uh, one more thing sir yes yes so yes even uh, many students are very unclear i, I can see the, uh, the the messages sent by many students they are kind of unclear what to do after this what where to go and do some things right so suppose if you are from a different background say for example I, i'll take my example <laughs> okay so i had done my btech in electrical and had done my mtech in you know the space engineering right so i changed the field because i was i was completely into space technology so i did that 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 means that there is no there is nothing that if you are in a in engineering which you want you don't want to continue in your the rest of your life don't worry if you're not clear with your vision don't worry make time and make sure that you have that particular goal in your mind if you want to become if you take a space space craft technology you have there are it is interdisciplinary suppose you are so much interested in propulsion okay but you are uh, currently you are doing a, a course or any kind of engineering in in any different kind maybe computer science so but if you want to do that in propulsion that is the that, that is your field but if you, but you are kind of unclear is that okay if i pursue that it will be okay you be, be in a dilemma right so what you need to do take your time don't dress to do a masters right after you btech take your time maybe you can you can enter into the industry one or two years or three years you work in an industry understand the industry try to re- realize what you need to do from your side to go to propulsion department or propulsion aerospace propulsion take your time we are not in a hurry but you know people say there is no time for the goal to achieve right it's, it's your own time don't compare with uh, yeah that's another thing please don't compare with anyone else you are the individual person you are the person who is going to live your life do that take your time and set the goal and achieve it exactly sir exactly it's matter a lot in which institution you are under which under whom you are working okay it's matter a lot i will quote one example of my life also actually i have done my master from power system and control but in brc i was supposed to work in the field of power electronics that is totally different okay but you guys uh, know in a starting 15 day i thought yaar i have taken wrong decision or yet but you know the result after one year i was the single guy in that brc who published one i triple e transaction in industrial electronics okay on my project i have proposed one system there that was 56% efficient than existing system in brc that's all was due to that institution only this all was due to that guide only or you can say under whom i was working okay so you just take your time as sir has suggested okay you take your time and be very clear in your vision okay and choose right place that is the most thing that you have to choose right place okay don't be in hurry okay uh, sir there is another question sir i want to make a satellite it's my dream what you would be the yeah, approach awesome. very Thank interesting you. question okay. rahul roy has mentioned okay yes yes this is a great thing even uh, many people the code for the satellite program, program. Okay. Um, they'll give you around 10 lakh or something uh, so guys can you just mute it i think niranjan you can mute it okay okay anyway so let me tell you uh, if you want to make a satellite make sure that you have the enough knowledge in it do uh, read a lot of books 
read uh, many internet articles and try to make it and make sure that if you do in a professional way, make sure that you do some projects or some research work in the, the major institutes in India. Especially you had to do that. So that's, that's the best thing which I like to say. Any question, uh, sir? Uh, any question, guys? You can just unmute and ask also. Okay, so Yokesh has mentioned I could see the question from Yokesh. So I am finally our electrical engineering. How to get started in space field? I'm very interested to support space work. Okay, so uh, you are finally an electrical engineering. Okay, so the thing is, try to understand the industry first. Okay, so you are, as you are from electrical engineering, uh, maybe you can you take some time because you are a bit, from your, from your question, I can, I can feel that you are a bit unclear about it. So because as I told you, electrical engineering, if, even if you are electrical engineering, you can pursue uh, the field in space technology because it is inter interdisciplinary. So make sure that you are really happy if you pursue your career in space technology from electrical background, make sure that you are clear with this. If you're not happy that, you know, if you are not interested to pursue electrical engineering in satellite technology, make sure that what, make sure that you understand what is the field which is suiting you. Try to fix it first, try to fix the goal. Then you can do a master's. Then only you are supposed to do the master's. People say, okay, right after Peter, you have to do MTEC. No, not necessarily. If you are very clear, do that. Otherwise take time, one or two, three, four, five years, you can take time, but not much. Take time and then do the, do the masters, especially in aerospace engineering. You can select it. What is the thing which you need to do? Then you pursue it. So Yogesh, yes, I would suggest you to do a masters for that. And then if you're very much interested, go for PhD as well. But make sure that PhD, uh, the job things a bit will be a bit narrowed. So make sure that you you are really you know strong enough to face it. Exactly. One more thing, sir, I want to add in it. See, you just uh, after in our uh, courses, okay, sir will be there, I am there. Uh, actually, we have trained faculties from industry and research area also, okay. They are from top R&D of India, okay. They are from top MNCs in India. You will be getting lots of guidance there. So, don't be panic, okay. Just concentrate on your goal, okay, and choose the right institution and right path, okay. Sir, one more question. Actually, today's questions are very interesting. So I am also extending the session. Okay. Uh, sir, I am first year engineering in aer uh, aeronautics engineering. My dream is to work in ISRO. What is the basis thing I need to get my dream? Okay. Okay. So Jivita has mentioned. Jivita has mentioned. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. You're in aeronautics. Amazing. So you're in first year. So make sure that you are having great marks in your whole engineering year okay so mostly about 80 percent will be fine 85 to be very precise and uh, then you can try for maybe at the final year of your engineer you can try for isro uh, there is uh, there are recruitments happening there and uh, exam you need to appear for exam so maybe you can go for gate exam or maybe at the end of the third year or fourth year you can appear for it and then uh, icrb there is a uh, you know indian isro uh, central uh, board of recruitment so that is a you know, there is an exam they actually do, you know, to, to recruit the candidates. So you can, you can appear for that and make sure that you're, as I told you earlier, make sure that you are so thorough with the basics and start preparing for this exam, ICRB, and uh, go for it. And you can appear for this exam and choose the field and then go for it. And I repeat, make sure that you are so thorough with the basics and practice more number of questions and, and try to do a lot of questions and MCQs. That's, that's, and it's, a, it's really tough, tough paper. So we have to work. Exactly. Uh, the same thing, sir, I want to add. Uh, you just try your internship in some space courses, okay? And be very clear in your basics. Exactly. Even your gate preparation should be very good. Actually, that will help out in that clearing the exams of ISRO, okay? And there is one more thing which I would like to add, sir. Uh, so here I can yes, see sir. many, as I told you, I'm repeating the same thing. Many are, many are saying that I want to work there, I want to work, I want to work in ISRO, NASA, that thing, such Exactly, field. exactly. That is the curiosity. People are, people are so fascinated about it, obviously. Exactly. But some people are very sure, okay, I have to do that. Some people are like, okay, I have to work there. No matter what I have to work, I have to go to ISRO, I have to go to NASA, I have to do some research in this field. But let me tell you one thing very clearly over here. Make sure that you're clear of what you have to do there if you enter into ISRO. There is a, there is a uh, video which I have seen on YouTube. 
there was a scientist who, who was working there in Istro in four, four years and he, and he kept the job because he's not happy with the field which you are, he was pursuing there. So guys, let me tell you, try to get industry experience. Very, very, very important thing. If you, if you are, if you have, if you can get any internship yeah, in like the sector, do that. You have to do that and make sure that you experience the industry and then you choose it. That's how you need to, that's what I told you. No need to be in a hurry to do your master's right after your BTEC. No. Work in industry, understand it, and make sure that you are clear with that particular field or goal and go for it. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Um, yes, sir, can yes, I talk? Good morning. Yes, yes, you can talk. Uh, yes, sir. I'm Induja. Uh, yes. Is there a separate uh, exam for ISRO? Can you tell the name of it, sir? Yes, yes, it is there. Uh, every Mostly, I think every year they have the recruitment for scientist C level. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Every every year they are recruiting on uh, the position scientist C, and uh, I think it is expected to come in March also. Correct, correct. After uh, get, after gate exam, you should have yes, that after gate they are uh, hmm. uh, state tune. They will be announcing soon. Okay, in March, March probably. Name? I think they, it's they, ICRB. ICRB. That's the name of it. You can search their website. It's already you just search that. it on website, okay? And it is just entrance. Uh, there are two ways, no, sir. One is gate, another is that entrance exam. Uh, ISRO, they don't go for gate. They have okay, okay. Gate. Only written exam. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. And sir, okay, one sir. more thank you, sir. I, it's ICRB. Okay. ICRB. Uh, I think it's ICRB. A, okay. ISRO. Uh, can we write it in third year also, sir? Third year no, of our bachelor engineering. No, no, no. Uh, I think in the final year. No, only you need to write in final uh, year also. Uh, final year only because after uh, selecting, you need to join that course. Okay. Okay. So you sir. can uh, write in final year. Okay. Thank you, sir. All the best. And uh, sir, next one more question. Can you suggest some internship on a space program? Yes. In a skill desire, we are having that internship on a space program. You can contact on that number which I have shared in chat section. I hope you got. I will share you again. Sir, there is another question. Sir, why all stage of a rocket are not reusable? Can all the stage be reusable in future? Okay, it depends on the mission. Uh, now, I mean, we have reusable launch launch uh, uh, vehicles. We have, I think, SpaceX, we have the same thing. So we can use it in, in future. Yes, definitely, yes, why not? We can use it. But it's, uh, uh, it's related to, you know, when you have any object which is moving away from this gravitational force or away from the atmosphere, it's very difficult for you to take it back. So that's the reason we notice the very first stage is reusable, it's taken back properly. In SpaceX, you can see that the Falcon 9, only that very first stage is, you know, reusable, it is taken back because it's very difficult if, you, if it is entering the atmosphere, you know, entering outside atmosphere. It's very difficult to uh, take it back and, and, and keep the trajectory again and you have to make the entry parameters there. So it's very difficult. So mostly first stages will be recovered back. But in future, yeah, obviously, everything. So, sir, uh, sorry, sir, are you there? Okay, so let me read uh, one of the uh, comment, one of the students' comments over here. So yeah, Yogesh has mentioned, sir, I have very last, less marks. Will I get a chance to work in space? Well, yes, why not? Obviously, even if you have less marks, try to find out the reason for it. Obviously, if you are an engineering level, uh, I can relate in my, my uh, <laughs> time of the, if I'm getting less marks, that mostly I'm not interested to learn that particular subject. That's the reason I'm getting less mark. If you are so much interested, you'll, I, I will definitely get a high mark for that. So make sure that you are in your interesting field and perceive it, try to do that and you know, go forward with it. Exactly, sir. Nice answer. Actually, same. I feel also. <laughs> it's obvious. If I'm not interested in the field, I don't do that. Yeah. I'll leave yes, it. obviously, you guess if you are getting less marks, I think you are not interested in that subject, then how you can work in space? They need very energetic, okay, very enthusiastic people, okay, to work there. Uh, and sir, the space... Not over. If you are getting less marks, don't, don't worry about it. And pursue the career, pursue the field in which you are so much interested in it. Don't listen to your parents and naysayers or neighbors or no one. Please don't listen to your heart. That's no, no, uh, it. May, uh, may I know in which year you are? Sir, final year electrical engineering. Sir. You are in electrical. final year. Okay, try hard in your final exam. Okay, 
that will improve your percentage no issue and sir there is another question sir the space x falcon 9 has have been succeeded in returning of the rockets back how it is possible sir is there any concept it's a reusability concept it is so, so let me read your question one more time ayur a space x falcon 9 have been has been succeeded in returning of the rocket returning of the rocket back how okay it's not returning it okay so it's only the first stage is returned back other than that they don't do it only the first thing is uh, there is a concept in it yeah it's a reentry concept they are completely aer purely aerodynamics we have seen that there are spins and all you know purely aerodynamics concept and even uh, you know the uh, the star uh, the, you know what do you say uh, they have different missions coming up right uh, so that is also happening the reentry is actually happening it's turning back and everything so it's an amazing thing yeah the sn10 sn9 and sn8 sn9 sn9 was the reason one yeah but uh, didn't touch down it exploded but it's very unfortunate but yeah they succeeded failures right failures are always helping them to do it i see if you want to work in a space and all we have a job oriented courses also okay we will be training in a space technology and we will providing you job in company that are working in this area okay so you can uh, enroll it in first first uh, week of the march we are starting the batch seats are very limited guys you can just enroll if you want any more question sir i think we have done up okay, with the I question and sir actually it okay. was a, and actually it was a wonderful session sir i also enjoyed a lot and uh, sir on behalf of whole skill desire team i would like to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to you for a excellent and informative session guys before ending today's session i would request everybody to please fill the feedback form the link has been shared in chat section and uh, i would also like to share few points about skill desire guys as sir has rightly pointed out throughout the session what i concluded the day has come where we have to talk about exactly real time needs so guys skill desire is india's largest real time learning platform where a student get trained by industrial experts along with certification and placement slots we at skill desire strongly believe that job is the by product of our skill sets so i will i will suggest you all to focus on skills rather than job guys you just subscribe our youtube channel there we update our new innovation daily for more detail visit our website and feel free to contact any time Uh, thank you so much sir uh, for the session and thank you all uh, waiting to see you all in our live session thank you very much mr uh, thank you thank you so much guys uh, uh, thank you for attending my session it was really great to talk to you and to uh, to share my knowledge about the space technology and everything so thank you so much for attending and it was uh, nice nice to see you all over here yeah okay thank, thank you, you sir we are uh, we uh, this sonu singh and vidun sir is waiting to see you all in our your our live session for much more discussion in it okay thank you all thank you guys